Briggs and Stratton four cycle gasoline engine. This one has a data tag on it. This is a 6BSF. And if I interpret the type number and serial number correctly, this engine was made in April of 1951. Two inch bore, two inch stroke, 1.75 horsepower. Taking a closer look at this uh, coupler here. This was obviously purpose built to drive something. I did see a photo online with an old fashioned uh, reel type mower with an engine like this on top of it. The engine is free. Recoil doesn't work very well. But it feels like it has compression. And I know it has spark because when I brought this home the other day, I had my hand on top of the spark plug and I went to pull it over to see if the motor was free and it shocked me up here. So that's good news right off the bat. I do want to pull the plug and uh, crank the motor over just to see what the spark looks like. The handle is broken off of this recoil at some point and somebody's got the end of the rope sort of knotted around this little steel rod which of course is not ideal, but it does work this way. But this recoil definitely needs some lube or something. Before I go cranking on too much, let me check the oil, which is right there. Right, I do see some oil down in there. That's actually some decent looking oil. Tiny little plug. Actually, it looks like it isn't that old. This is a Champion RCJ8. Let me put in the old tester here. Get the scope down in the cylinder, see if I can see anything. It looks like there's some uh, moderate carbon buildup on top of the piston. And I think I also saw some vertical scoring on the cylinder walls. It's hard to tell if those vertical lines were actually scoring marks or if they're just oil trails. I guess the takeaway is that uh, it looks like this engine's been used a fair amount. And the external condition sort of confirms that theory. This, this little motor got a lot of use back in the day. So before I start cranking on it, I'm gonna put some marble down the cylinder just to give it a little bit of lube. And I'm just going to take a wire brush to this plug real quick. So I'm going to give it a couple of pulls just to see how the spark looks. Let's see 
what's going on here in the top of the air cleaner. This is an oil bath air cleaner. Looks okay. This little lever right here is the choke. Choke on, choke off, on, off. That's easy enough. So as far as the carburetor goes, it looks to me like this is all there is. This part here would equate to the intake manifold and the whole gas tank here would sort of equate to the carburetor bowl. Um, it's probably got a pickup tube that goes down into the tank and draws the fuel up. I don't think there's anything more to that. And it looks like this intake manifold, if you will, uh, is missing a screw here or is it not missing a screw? There's also an open screw hole down here. So we've got a screw in the top left and the bottom right, but not in the top right or the bottom left. Another thing I'm noticing here is the governor spring and control rod and throttle is basically not functioning. The spring is either not connected at all or it's all stretched out. So I might have to take this cover off and uh, get in here and try to tighten this up a little bit. But before I do that, let's take a look inside the fuel tank. Almost scared to look. <clears throat> okay, that's not coming off. Oh boy. So the gas is either perfectly clear and the bottom of the gas tank is that brown rust color or the gas is so old that it has turned brown. One way to find out. Well, there's the answer. That doesn't even smell like gas at all. It smells more like a paint or a varnish. And just for fun, we're gonna see how well this stuff actually burns. It doesn't. Wow. Isn't that interesting? There it goes, finally. All right, so this tank slant carburetor has to come off. I see two screws right there. Hopefully that will allow the tank to drop down.
that's all there is to that. I thought maybe there'd be a, like a return tube or like an overflow, but there isn't. The inside of the tank has seen better days. I mean, it doesn't look good, but it isn't terrible either. Rather than getting too carried away about, you know, putting abrasives and other things down in the tank and shaking it up and trying different solvents and stuff. First, I'm just gonna try to soak this in evaporust. Let me get this cover off so I can have a better look at the governor mechanism. Maybe I can lube up this recoil too. Okay, here's the coil. Looks like somebody made a repair on it at some point, or at least they soldered it. Those gaps look awfully close. That gap right there, and this gap right there. I could not find the specs on this immediately. I'll look it up later. But there's actually a, a larger air gap than it looks like to the eye. Yeah, it feels like they're about eight thousandths. So uh, I'll just leave that the way it is. All right, so here's the governor vein. You can see what's going on with the spring there. Basically isn't doing anything. So I guess I'll just cut some of that off and tighten it up and then we'll readjust it again after uh, the motor gets running. I don't wanna make it too tight, so I'm just gonna take a couple of kinks out. Maybe the spring is dead. No matter how much I shorten it, it just doesn't seem to have very much tension to it. So let me see if I can find a new one. One about this size. Yeah, let's try that one. Okay, I took that new spring, shortened it up quite a bit, and uh, we have much better tension now. I think we'll go with that for now, and then uh, of course we'll have to wait until the engine gets running to make a final adjustment on this, make sure it's working properly. Okay, regarding these uh, open holes in the intake manifold right here, there is not a hole in there, that's just a block. And if you come down here to this bottom one on the left, right down in there, there's no hole for that one either. In fact, this one, if you did put a screw through there, it would go below the head and in between the fins, so there's nothing there. So I'm just assuming that this intake manifold is used on different engines and different applications with different bolt holes. And they just made one that's sort of a universal fit. This screw right here, uh, some sort of a air mix screw. So I'm gonna turn it all the way in and see where it's set at right now. And then we'll uh, use the standard one and a half revolutions out. So that's half, full. So it was only out one full revolution. So should I put it back at one revolution out or should we go one and a half? I think we'll go one and a half and adjust from there. Half, one, half. So how can I tell if this pickup tube is clear or not? 
Looks like there's a little screen on the bottom of it. And then it goes up right below the uh, air mix needle, which makes sense. All right, the tank's out of the evaporust. Uh, I only had it in there for about an hour, but it did a satisfactory job. There's no more rust, just a little bit of discoloration from age. And I also cleaned it out with some brake clean. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it. And uh, hopefully this pickup tube works. I have no reason to think it doesn't, um, but I could not force either air or liquid either up or down that tube because it's got a, a screen on the bottom and a tiny little hole on the top. The only thing I can figure is maybe there's like a check ball on the bottom or something in here that only works, you know, when the motor has a vacuum. I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. I'll try some of uh, Terrell's gel lube on this recoil. Seems better. So I'm gonna leave the air cleaner off for now so I can use some uh, starting fluid to get it going. I, I am gonna fill the gas tank. Hopefully the pickup too works and it'll start drawing its own fuel. And then if it does get started, I'll have to adjust this mixture screw probably and probably the tension on the governor spring. Okay, time for some fuel. Will it run? Sounded good. Let me put the choke on. Choke off. Okay, well, it's definitely a runner, but we've obviously got a fuel issue. I don't know if that pickup tube is not working or what.
No choke, no priming. Let's see if it goes by itself. It must have just taken some time for it to get gas out of the tank up into the cylinder and it did help when I choked it gave it more vacuum right so that that was key to getting it going once it got going didn't have to choke it at all ran great let's try it one more time with the air cleaner on Took her a little while to wake up, but when she did, she's running pretty good. Well, I don't have a tachometer to check the RPMs, but it sounds to me like it's running a little fast. So as far as the governor adjustment goes, if you want to reduce the high speed RPM, then you reduce the tension on the governor spring. If you want to increase the high speed RPM, then you increase the tension on the spring. So I want to bring the RPM down a little bit so I can take some tension out of the spring a little bit, or I can just try to put it in this next hole right here, which will effectively detension the spring. So I'm gonna try that first. And it's the next day now, it's about 30 degrees out this morning. Uh, it hasn't been started since yesterday afternoon. So we'll get that relocated to the next hole and then we'll fire it up and see if that did anything to the RPMs. So this would be a cold start. I'm not gonna use any primer this time. I'm just gonna try to choke it. Well, that governor adjustment definitely did the trick, didn't it? It really slowed the RPMs down. So just by moving the governor spring from this hole 
to this hole we dropped at least 500 rpms i know it's hard to tell by ear but uh that's what it sounds like to me anyway i think the manual says these are rated for 3600 rpm at 1.75 horsepower So you could have it run at 3600 RPM or choose to run at a slower speed for uh, perhaps a different application. Anyway, if you want the RPMs to increase, you tension the governor spring. And if you want the RPMs to decrease, you detension the governor spring, you, either by moving it into a different hole, uh, changing the physical tension of the spring, or even manipulating this arm here backwards or forwards if your machine allows you to do that. And for a cold start, this thing really started up nicely. I choked it, gave it, what, one or two pulls, turned off the choke, and then she fired on the next one. So I still want to get a correct handle for it, maybe even replace the rope. This one's looking a little bit old. And um, I think I might restore this little guy. All right, let me crank it up one more time, and then we'll sign off for now.